How's it going everyone? Sephir here and I am finally back. Yes, it is true this time. I took a little bit of a break there just to catch up on some real life things as well as uh, just a lot of different things happening with games in general right now. I've been trying out a few things so I just wanted to give you a bit of an update as to where I'm currently looking at with the channel at the moment. I'm still going to be covering New World as you can see on the screen which will be the topic of the video today. We're going to talk about the March update and the Heart of Madness content patch, which is going to be coming to the game. And I'm also playing Lost Ark at the moment currently. I have finally got myself in a position where I feel comfortable uh, being like a subject matter expert. Before I know there was a lot of players who had played on the Korean and Russian servers that had far more uh, information currently at the moment than I did. So I wanted to wait a bit until I fully have experienced everything, done everything before I made these video. Because when I make videos, I like to speak from that experience standpoint. It's just my style. Uh, so I'm just just going to start now pushing out some more Lost Art content that will hopefully be helpful and relevant to you guys, especially if you're trying to progress characters, as well as more New World content. There's going to be a lot of interesting patch changes and gameplay mode features coming into the future as they have laid out that roadmap as well, and we'll get into that later. We'll do a separate video. We'll talk all about that roadmap. I also tried out a few other games like Elden Ring. It was not my cup of tea. Fantastic game, however, uh, but I probably will not be covering that one. There are some other couple things that are interesting uh, to me right now. The Tiny Tinius uh, Mayhem just came out, I know, and then there was also a game called Tower of Fantasy, which looks kind of like a anime and MMORPG or something. Who knows? We'll be checking out a few, but I think for those style of games, I'm just going to do more of a review and let you guys know if it's good, if it's worth your time, if it's worth playing right now, because I know everyone's hungry for MMOs. They're hungry for a good game to sink their teeth into, so I'm going to try to keep everyone updated on that and what's going on in these games. So, with that out of the way, that's just an update on me personally. You should expect some more content coming here now daily, uh, as we have done in the past. I know we had a little bit of a break there, but we're finally back, so let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, this time we're going to be covering New World's March of Update for the Heart of Madness. This is going to be a lot of interesting features as well as a new weapon, the Blunderbuss, coming into the game. So it's going to be nice to see that. We're going to take a look at the meat and potatoes here. I'm going to put the link in the description down below so that you can check it out yourself and be like, hmm, maybe this is something I want to come back to, or yeah, maybe that interests me. You can look at all the fine details there, but we're just going to take a look at the really core important things, and we're going to skip over the like, you know, we fix this random bug or whatever that may be. All right, so going down, the spotlight is really going to highlight that final quest, which in the main storyline as we know it kind of came to a stopping point finally we're going to get the tempest heart expedition which is going to be the one with isabella and we are going to see the story progress and the final chapter for that so that's going to be nice to look at personally i'm going to go back just to check that one out see how it goes see how it ends see what's coming in the future so that's going to be something really nice to take a look at we also have the new weapon the blunderbuss which is going to be this uh shotgun basically right uh so it looks like a big hitting weapon. Um, adventurers will be able to progress through the two different uh, tree paths. There's going to be a containment tree, which I'm guessing is going to be about, uh, you know, getting in getting in someone's face and just like really locking them down. And then there's also a chaos tree, which is going to have a large quantity of explosions, which everybody loves explosions. So we'll see how these two weapons uh, kind of play out uh, historically in the past when we had like the introduction of Void Gauntlet. It was pretty lackluster at first and then all of a sudden there was a one-shot combo with the Ice uh, Gauntlet and all, all chaos broke loose, right? Uh, so hopefully we don't get a repeat of that. So we'll have to dive into there and see what kind of cool weapons um, combos you can build off of. I've heard some cool stuff about the Blunderbuss and the Warhammer, uh, but we'll definitely be checking that out for ourselves. So if we scroll down, they have a few more uh, like world experience additions that they're talking about here. It's just like new things. So there's something called world paintings, like Vista Views, that you can kind of interact with. Uh, it has to do with the player housing. Uh, so that's going to be something interesting. Looks like they have a loot collector. So uh, there's somebody rummaging, rummaging around a turnum for lost treasures and goods. So that's interesting. Nice little, uh, you know, find this special thing, um, like special monsters or something that I really enjoy. Uh, 
especially rare spawns and things like that. So getting something like this in the game, it's something that I talked about before. It's like, oh, hey, yeah, like, you know, there's something special. Like, ooh, I really want to kill that rare monster because he's kind of, uh, you know, something valuable. I think this is always good for games. Uh, they have a couple other, looks like monsters and different things like that. So NPCs and various just engagements within the game here. So there's a lot more open world added features that are going to be coming in which is always nice to see as well as the expeditions uh, they're going to be uh, updating the queue requirements for the expeditions uh, so that only one person at the needs to be at the entrance instead of everybody so that's a nice quality of life thing because you usually had to get like three out of five and took a, people a while to get there so whoever has the orb now can just go there or the key or whatever that is and then they have a couple of bug fixes that are kind of in general just going to be quality of life right um, collision bugs are generally what I'm looking at because that was my biggest gripe in the past was the way things happened when you got rooted or got like stuck or something like that. Uh, so these are going to be really nice. There's a couple of quest updates. So there's going to be extra quests, mostly centered around the main story quest and the blunderbuss, which is going to have a, you know, sort of quest uh, line that's going to be tied with it. Like I'm assuming all the other weapons do. They have that uh, legendary weapon quest line. And then a couple other notable fixes and general combat and AI uh, adjustments. These are going to be uh, adjustments to the way that the enemies are interacting to you and the way you're performing skills. So this is going to be some nice stuff to see. A very long list of that, <laughs> covering a lot of range of different things. And then we get down to this good part here for the mutated, uh, the mutators and the mutated AI. So the difficulty of the elite AI have been tuned down a little bit while the bosses have been tuned up. And I think that's a good thing because what happened in mutations was the bosses were the easiest part of the instance, right? The hardest part was the big packs and the big pulls. Uh, so now that's a little bit different, which is going to be good because I think the bosses should generally be the harder part of the instance. So that's going to be nice. Um, then there's also tool tips for major curses, uh, for mutator difficulties that are less than nine. So that's going to be uh, something interesting to see. And a couple of fixes for the desiccated buff. So that's something that was causing a lot of issues in the high level mutation. Uh, there's various adjustments as well. Uh, same with Eternal. That paranoid not triggering on damage over time effects is actually pretty huge because a lot of classes were screwed over by having dots that would constantly proc paranoia and it was making it very hard to play the game, right? Uh, so we also have some general combat updates and here i see something about weapon sheathing so that always worries me uh but the chef uh the sheathing and unsheathing animations for lessons would loop if a player stopped moving while one was playing okay that makes sense and then they have fixed some smoothness with that okay so i'm just hoping they didn't get rid of you know weapon swapping to continue momentum because i feel like that's a core function within the game and that would be a big yikes right if they, <laughs> they got rid of something like that uh, a couple of updates for ammos and the way that that damage is calculated so if you are a musket or bow player that might be something you want to take a look at and then we have a whole slew of updates these are a lot of weapon updates i'm going to be getting into the game and testing all of them out let you know which ones are good or bad so if you have your particular favorite weapon i know i like the life staff i'm going to be taking a look at all these good things i'm going to be checking that out myself and then as we go down further we should have a few more updates they have various item changes with some of the perks uh, some of the items itself uh, so that's going to be a good balance to be centered around. I know like things like uh, bloodletting before in the past was really not good because the percent was very low. But when you change something from like a 5 to 15 to a 10 to 30%, all of a sudden it gains a lot of value, especially it opens up some options for like rapier bleed builds or spear bleed builds. Uh, and then they also have the same thing with perks like burning. So it looks like they're doubling back on some of those uh, perks that aren't generally used as much and trying to buff them up a little bit so that they become a little bit better so that you can have some more variety in the meta. And I think that's always a good thing. Uh, we also have some game mode updates that are coming here. So that's going to be interesting. I like this elite boss arena um, idea. We always thought in the past that the arenas were a little too easy. We figured that they were going to add like a harder version. And they're doing exactly that. So you're going to in get increased quantity of rewards uh, that you're going to get from the caches from the elite boss arenas. And completing the boss arenas will also give you umbral shards. So 50 is a decent amount. It's something. It's not entirely too much. Mutators will give you much much more but you know hey 
it's something slightly different, right? Uh, War is going to be changed vastly. This is a major change. Defenders no longer respawn on the points A, B, and C. They can only respawn inside of their fort. I think this is a fantastic change because before you were stuck in this deadlock where defenders always had the massive advantage because... Uh, they could just eternally respawn on top of the point that you were currently fighting on. So it made it to where the first like 10 to 15 minutes of a even-sided match were pretty much irrelevant because if spawn timers didn't exist and weren't as long, there was no possible way you were taking a point while people were just constantly respawning on top of that point. Uh, unless you know we're glitching or abusing some sort of mechanic. That's a that's a whole nother story though. Uh, but they have the increased quantity of rewards that players will receive from the war caches which is also uh interesting um we'll see how that goes i don't know as like what that quantity is like you know that's that's a very loose term it's like, ooh, increased quantity like you may think it could be a lot it could also just be nothing at all so we'll have to check that one out and see um invasions got a buff on their rewards they definitely needed it because i know a lot of people were starving like hey man come come to the invasion protect our town but then people are like yeah but what's the point like we beat it before uh you know you don't get that much uh, is there any reason to so uh hopefully that will help incentivize people with the invasions a lot more so that'll be something nice to look at uh, then we have a few changes to Outpost Rush. I like that they removed the down state, so players immediately die when hitting zero health instead of, like, setting on the ground. The biggest gripe about that was people would just give up, and then the player would not get credit for the kill, and that was just kind of annoying. Uh, so that's always good. Uh, there's a couple of good things, changes in terms of that kill credit as well. The player uh, who kills the enemy instead of the player who puts them into the death door will now get the credit. Uh, so basically, whoever puts them to zero first... Uh, we'll get that credit on there. So uh, a little bit of kill stealing going around still, but it's something slightly better. And players will now receive credit for contesting a control point. That's also good because defending is an important part of Outpost Rush and no one wants to do it, right? Because the score doesn't reward you anything for that. Uh, so they just want to go out and get kills. But now this will hopefully help incentivize that a little bit better. Uh, then we have some few changes to economy and crafting. So it looks like it's general quality of life and lowering the quantity of materials required to craft some of these uh, key tuning orbs and uh, things of that nature. So these are going to be uh, nice changes to see. A lower quantity on the crafting means we can craft more, which is going to be great. And then the rewards from certain instances like elite boss arenas are going to be increased as well as uh, hidden stashes of earthly rewards that are supposed to be uh, within harvesting and logging and mining. So that's going to be pretty fun, actually. I kind of like that. Uh, so you can get elemental moats, coins, and diamond gypsum. Uh, there'd be like hidden within the resource nodes. So that's definitely nice to see. I'm going to have to see how that actually fully interacts with. Uh, but some of that stuff will be really cool to check out. A couple of gear and loot visual changes and UI um, just general adjustments as well as messaging so this just looks like all you know base stuff behind the scenes work nothing that we need to check out too much entirely and then they had the ptr notes listed uh so this is going to be the changes that were resulted from the ptr from everybody who tested it and kind of gave back feedback so that's going to be where we're getting some of these changes from so overall i think this is going to be a pretty good content update um, will it say, you know, revive New World and completely revamp everything? I don't know. Um, that's yet to be seen. I like the roadmap that the developers have finally put out. I think it's about time that we needed a roadmap, so we'll be probably be covering that one next. Um, you know, we're talking about things in the future like PvP and um, different game modes and maybe harder content, in-game content, and that's exactly what this game needs. I've said it time and time again. It was some of the last videos that I made was talking about that. So please, 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 developers, get on that ASAP. And it looks like you kind of are. So great job. Get that going because that's going to be what's going to bring players to the game, right? This this is what people want to do. Uh, but the, all in all, this Heart of Madness is a nice update. It will give us a new weapon to toy around with uh the new expedition which will be the tempest heart so we can check out the isabella raid i'm wondering if that's going to be available for the mutation rotation 
Uh, hopefully it is. That would be interesting to check out. Um, but, you know, getting some content in like this is definitely going to be healthy. And I want to see where the story goes. I want to see what happens with Isabella and the continuation. What happens with Captain Thorpe? What happens with all of these NPCs that we learned about along the way while we were playing the game? So that would definitely be something cool to check out. All right, uh, I think that's going to be about it for this one. A little bit of a long one, but uh, not too shabby. I've done worse before in the past, right? Uh, but as I said, we're going to be having some more content coming up. We'll probably be talking about the New World Developer Roadmap next. And I know it was announced a little bit back, but I was kind of waiting for them to give some solid uh, update information. And now since this Heart of Madness has been announced, I'm going to go ahead and continue to cover and take a look at all of these things that are coming into the new world uh changes and i'm going to test them in game and let you guys know my thoughts on the blunderbuss i'm going to give you uh you know my thoughts on the skill build uh, i'm going to check out the new expedition and maybe make a guide on it and a couple of cool things like that and we'll see what new world has in the future in terms of content i'm excited for the 3v3 pvp that's definitely going to be really fun and hopefully it's done correctly with a nice leaderboard that should definitely be a nice spice up for the game uh in addition to that i will be starting to cover a lot of lost art content really fast i've been playing a lot um i think i'm at uh, almost 1400 gear score which is like uh well, what is it called phase three yeah phase three argos uh level we're getting really close to that so i just wanted to check out all that content and give you guys the updates like what's the do's what's the don'ts uh, mistakes to avoid things of that nature uh, so we'll go ahead and be checking those out into the future all right well thanks for watching this video everybody i know it's been a while appreciate everyone sticking around with the channel make sure to subscribe like and hit the bell if you have not as always and we will catch you in the next video